What's up folks, it's your boy Coach Ty back at you with another one. And one of the most often asked questions for beginners is how much protein should I be eating? There's tons of conflicting information. One person saying this, the other person saying the opposite. So as usual, we're gonna cover the literature and the research to come away with an answer. Let's get straight into it. Here we go. So the first step in answering this question is going to be, what is your goal? And that's how we're gonna break down this video. Since you're on a website or YouTube channel called MuscleWiki, I'm gonna assume that most of you have a goal of gaining muscle primarily. So we're gonna start with that one. Across the majority of the literature, there is no additional benefit for muscle growth once you go over 0.8 grams per pound, for my American viewers, and 1.8 grams per kilogram for the rest of the planet, pretty much. Once you go over that point, you kind of hit a point of diminishing returns. So that needs to be the minimum amount of protein that you are hitting. Now there can be some confounding factors or variables that may make you want to go even higher. If you're doing high amounts of volume, if you're more advanced, if you have an optimized training program, but you're a beginner, so I'm going to assume that none of those things are true for you, even though this is probably still applicable to more advanced lifters. So again, 0.8 grams per uh, pound of body weight, 1.8 grams per kilogram of body weight is my general recommendation for weight lifters, primarily trying to gain muscle. And again, that's your minimum amount. If you do go above that number, it's not the end of the world, it's not gonna hurt you, it's not bad. The only point I'm making here is you won't get much of an additional benefit once you go past that. I do know that this is probably counterintuitive to what you have heard before. The general recommendation given to lifters is a gram per pound or 2.2 grams per kilogram. Once again, there's nothing wrong with going that high. There could be reasons why you want to, I am by no means saying that that's bad or wrong or anything like that. Again, the point is point of diminishing returns. So long as you get that 0.8 per uh, pound or 1.8 per kilogram, Jesus, I'm getting all twisted up with these numbers. So long as you get those numbers, you're good. Do you need different amounts of protein for bulking and cutting? Well, my short answer is, uh, probably not, maybe, I'm not exactly sure. So I found this great debate between Minno Henselmans and Eric Helms, who are both far smarter than I am. Minno Henselmans was debating you don't need more protein when you cut, Eric Helms was arguing that you do. They went back and forth with a mountain of research and ultimately they both made great points. They both you know, backed up all of their claims with studies. So I'm not sure, honestly, what side of that I come down on personally. However, I do agree with Minnow's ultimate summarization of this debate, which is what Eric and I definitely agree on, along with every other expert on protein that I know, is that between 1.8 to 2.7 grams per kilogram, you generally won't experience any major or even noticeable differences in performance or body composition. So that upper limit that I gave earlier at 2.2, he went a little bit higher. Again, there are some reasons why you might wanna go higher for a beginner, it's probably not necessary. But again, between those numbers, so long as you're in there somewhere, you'll be just fine. Moving on to the losing body fat goal. Now, this is a little bit different. So consider if you are, let's say five foot nine and you weigh 225 pounds. If you were to use the formula that I just gave you, you would get somewhere between 180 and 225 grams of protein. Obviously that's a ton of protein because that formula ceases to work very well once you get to too high of a body fat percentage or once you're overweight or especially when you're obese. So instead, what you should do is calculate your lean body mass. Now, the first thing that you're gonna have to do here is get your body fat percentage. 
There are multiple ways to do this. Some people will just eyeball it. I don't think that's the best idea. People tend to grossly underestimate their actual body fat percentage. I would recommend you get it taken professionally. There are several ways to do this. Uh, you can either have someone use calipers. You can do the calipers at home. Um, there is DEXA scan. There are uh, BIA or bio impedance analysis machines that you can use. There's hydrostatic weighing. There are bod pods. Any of those methods will work. Whichever one of those methods you start with, I would just recommend you stick with that method for the length of your body fat loss journey so you get reliable measurements. Once you have your body fat percentage, you'll take your body weight, multiply it by your body fat percentage, and then you'll take the number you get at the end and subtract it from your total body weight. That is the number that we're gonna use to prescribe your protein intake. So you wanna take that number and multiply it by 1.04 grams per pound or 2.3 grams per kilogram of body weight. Now, yes, those numbers are a little bit higher, but based on the literature that I read, the research that I read, going a little bit higher is appropriate when we're just considering lean body mass. Before, with the gain muscle goal, if you're at a healthy body weight, healthy body fat percentage, we're not removing the body fat from your total weight. And so it makes sense to go a little bit lower on the protein recommendation because it is still considering your total weight, your body fat. This number for the body fat loss goal is only considering your lean body mass, not your body fat. So it makes sense to go a little bit higher. Moving on to our next goal, improving health. So for anyone who is simply looking to improve their health and eat optimally for health purposes, you're not gonna need as much protein as a gain muscle person. Now, I'm going to read this next part, so forgive me for looking away from the camera. Um, one meta-analysis of 119 studies found to meet the functional needs, such as promoting skeletal muscle protein accretion and physical strength, dietary intake of 1, 1.3, and 1.6 protein per kilogram of body weight per day is recommended for individuals with minimal, moderate, and intense physical activity, respectively. So again, the number's not quite as high. Now, we don't have hard lines on what light, moderate, and intense physical activity is. There's no hard science on this. So you're gonna have to be the judge of it yourself. I can absolutely tell you that if you work a labor job, construction, for example, you can safely put yourself in the intense category. If you work behind a desk, then the low physical activity group is for you. A couple of additional quick points for the health focus viewers. Is eating meat unhealthy? Now this has been uh, intensely debated on the mean streets of social media and YouTube for a very long time. Uh, but again, what does the literature say? What does the research say? First, the I, I, I was listening to a, a rap podcast of all things, and one of the people on the podcast said, you know, hum people weren't even designed to eat meat. They're not supposed to eat meat. That's not, they're not, we're not even supposed to eat meat. This is so incorrect and wrong. <laughs> It's, it's just, it's wrong for several reasons. One, you have canine teeth, which is an indication that you can consume meat. Two, if you just couldn't consume meat, if you weren't designed to do so, as soon as you ate a piece of chicken, you would vomit it back up. You, li you literally would not be able to eat it. And then third, the pH level of the human stomach. So you've got alkaline and then you've got acidic humans sit pretty much directly in the middle, meaning that we can consume all kinds of things and be just fine. So the idea that you're not meant to eat meat, you're not designed to eat meat is just patently false. You can eat meat. The natural next question is, well, I can eat meat, but again, is it healthy or unhealthy? Well, I've got a very large study. Let me go to my notes here. Um, 
A study conducted across 175 countries found a positive relationship between life expectancy or longevity and consuming meat. And before anyone responds with, well, these were developed countries, so of course they have longer life expectancy, it's not because of the meat, this study controlled for that. Uh, this relationship, improved life expectancy when consuming more meat, remains significant when influences of caloric intake, urbanization, obesity, education, and carbohydrate crops were statistically controlled. And the most simple measure of whether or not something is healthy or not is longevity. Does the person engaging in the behavior live longer? And again, meat eaters in, across 175 different countries, these researchers found that the people consuming meat lived longer, not the ones who were not. Now, as you make this, I wanna make this point emphatically. I am not telling you to not be a vegetarian. I'm not telling you to not be a vegan. If that's what you want to do, please have at it. It's totally cool with me. I'm not disparaging it. I'm not downing it. Do whatever you'd like. If that works for you, again, have at it. But the idea that because someone is consuming meat, they're going to die earlier or it's inherently unhealthy is simply not true. And one more suggestion for anybody who does not consume meat. There's such a thing as the leucine threshold. Leucine is a branched chain amino acid that triggers the, the proper metabolization of proteins. If you don't get enough leucine, the body will not use the protein towards muscle repair, recovery, and therefore growth. So if you are not consuming any meat, you should probably supplement with a branched chain amino acid supplement featuring primarily leucine. That's the most important one. Uh, if you are eating meat, then you probably, well, no, you definitely don't need a BCAA supplement. Just quick aside. Moving on, is there such a thing as too much protein? The short answer is, yeah, probably. Like most things, you hit a point of diminishing returns, and with some things you get what's called an inverted U relationship, where you do a particular behavior, eat a particular thing, whatever it might be, and the benefit goes up and up, and then once you pass a certain threshold, well, we start to go back down. And we can end up with uh, an initially healthy thing that is now unhealthy because you're doing it too much. This seems to be the same case with me. So I'm gonna read a portion of the aforementioned study. Long-term consumption of protein at two grams per kilogram body weight per day is safe, and the tolerable upper limit is three and a half grams per kilogram body weight per day for well-adapted subjects. Chronic high protein intake may result in digestive, renal, and vascular abnormalities and should be avoided. So there you have it. Grossly high amounts of protein will probably have negative effects. Now I am personally curious to see some more research come out on the carnivore diet, which you may have heard, which is essentially people eating only meat. Uh, there's not a whole lot of studies on it right now. I'm sure there will be more as it rises in popularity. But if I had to, uh, what's the word, speculate, I would guess most people will not do well on that type of diet because, as I said earlier about the human pH, the more well-rounded the diet is, the healthier it is. You can't get all of your sources of nutrients from just one specific food group or one specific food. You need a spectrum of different kinds of things in order for you to get an optimally healthy diet. So it's probably not the best for everybody, but I'm sure there are some special populations that it works really well for. And that's all I got to say about that. Thank you for listening, folks. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I've got a couple more videos that will be in the corners for you here in a second. I am Coach Ty with Muscle Wiki, and I will see you with the next one. Deuces.